Hello viewers from wherever you're watching this tutorial. In this tutorial, it's actually a series of tutorial where I will be building a live software from the scratch. While the name of the software I'll be building is an attendance management system, it's basically a Windows based application which is going to be built in two different languages in the Visual C -Shop as well as Visual Basic.net. The aim of this tutorial is to help beginners and people who have not really built any software before to actually know how to build your software. You may be a college student who has a project to submit or you are uh, someone who feels like you want to learn how to make uh, a durable software that can be used on your personal computer. Well, this tutorial is all you need and this tutorial is going to teach you everything you need to know about building the software. Well, attendance management system, like you know, you have a student who has a college and the college has a professor the professor belongs to a faculty and a department at the same time so this happens in a sequence and it's a series in software management system are uh, there so many uh, techniques or so many procedure or processes that you have to follow mm -hmm. before you come up with your software at the end of it at the end of the day before you even start your your coding or your design phase, there is a need to gather information which I will not be covering in this tutorial. So in this tutorial, basically, I'm going to jump into what and what I feel makes up my software. Well, the attendance management system contains the following entities. The institute or the college name, the, the student who is going to attend the college, the institute of the faculty, or uh, many faculties, as you're going to see in our hero diagram, and uh, Many faculties has uh, a faculty has many departments. Uh, each department has a professor and uh, his staff, a non-teaching or teaching staff, and each department offers different courses, either in from the graduate course or, or postgraduate course. And at the end of the day, our main focus will be the attendance. Each student will have an attendance for each subject. However, I've decided not to put a subject. I mean, the subject uh, entity here, just. Uh, <laughs> For the simplicity's sake, uh, in this tutorial, we'll be adding other utilities such as a notepad and a calculator to make our sub software easy to use. So, uh, so uh, like I said there earlier, this is a Windows Form application, and what are the forms that we need? The first form we need is a splash screen. The splash screen basically uh, is your loading page. Uh, if you have a Windows or any kind of uh, operating system when you turn this operating system on it starts to load and, and and then before it goes to the login page and afterwards you go into the login page and the login page you, you enter your username and your password then or you know that's all about login page however I have decided not to include uh, the registration the user registration page just uh, for for you know to make it not on in a, an unambiguous, sorry. So the user registration form is also there, and you have your MDI form. Your MDI form contains the, the parent container that, that allows you to fit in all uh, your child front. And then you have the, the institute information, which I named as institute duties, which is also a form. You have the student, the registration of the student, that is, you're going to register the student duties. And you have the faculties, which you can kind of name the faculty, which is going to put them. The details of the faculty, the details of the department, the department is also a firm. And you have a professor or a staff which you have to put the information of the staff, which is another firm. Then you have your course, which is a UG or a UG course. Then you have your subject, which is being taught by a professor, the year and the, the unit. Then you have the attendance. The attendance are firm is are it's not going to be described explicitly, but during the coding phase and the during the design phase, you get to understand how this attendance form will look like. Then you have a series of reports when you want to generate the report, the attendance report, uh, the report of students, the report of students who they make up to 75% attendance as speculated by most university, and so on and so forth. And that's all about the forms and uh, the number of forms we need in our, our software. Basically, it's around 10 to 12 forms. But during the during the course of this, uh, you know, coding on, on this project, you you find out that we may add some more firms 
in the end. Like uh, you have other utility from which I'll be building my own calculator. I'll be building my own, uh, you know, uh, utility which I'm gonna put in this software for myself later on. Okay. Then uh, this is a no in here diagram which I've uh, taken my pain to to really. So you have a student who takes admission in an institute. We have many students who takes an ad, which, which who takes admission in one institute, and if institute has many faculties, the student could belong to the faculty of science or art or whatever whatever faculty. And 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 the faculty uh, as a department that is uh, the department belongs to a faculty. Of, I uh, take for example, you have a faculty of science, uh, you have a uh, department of computer science, department of mathematics, uh, statistics department, and other departments. And department, as professors, professors work for the department, which makes professors belong to the faculty. Then you have department that offers courses. The department offers different courses, the undergraduate and postgraduate courses, and courses has subject. Uh, one course has many subjects, depending on your the the type of course, probably on the graduate postgraduate course. And this course is being taught by uh, many professors. You have many many mm -hmm. many subjects being taught by many professors. Uh, one professor works in one department, and you have the main system, the attendance system. Uh, the, the student picks attendance. Many students takes uh, many attendance. This is a quick, uh, you know analysis of the here diagram. Now I've, I've, I've tried all my possible best to to make sure that I have a database stable. This is not actually the way it should be, but for the sake of uh, learning and tutorial sake. So you have a system administration registration uh, which has uh, the following you know, column names. The ID is auto-generate. Anywhere you see auto means auto-generate. I'm going to be auto-generating a password. I mean, sorry, the ID in my database. So you have a registration ID, the name, the username, the password, the days of birth of, of the person, the role and the privilege. You have a user login that has the ID which is also mm -hmm. generated. And you have a login ID, the name, the username and the password. So those are the basic things that we you know we need in our our login digits. Like you can see that you have a registration ID with the primary key in the system admin registration. And uh, login ID is a foreign key to that uh, system admin reg ID, uh, you know, column name. So you have an institute, the details the of the institute is there. You have a ID, which is something to read it. The institute ID, which is primary key, the name, address, establishment date, email, contact number, owner, and capacity. And you have the faculty database, which is uh, faculty ID which is the primary key, institute ID, which is a foreign key, but the primary key, the name of the faculty, the head of the faculty, information about the faculty, number of employees, number of department, number of students, email contact number, in turn, so far, you can have in your the faculty this. Well, I'm so sorry about, you know, repeating the faculty this again. That should be department details next to the faculty this. Uh, you have a department name, uh, department ID, uh, name of the department head, number of employees, about number of student emails in front of the, and you have the course, which is as calls ID, which has the uh, department ID, the name, the type of the course, whether you do the course, the duration of the course, uh, the year, probably first year, second year, third year, the number of students, and the subject, which is grouped by here. So you have also uh, the staff. Database which contains every and all information about their staff, the staff ID, which is the primary key, then your first name, the last name, your middle name, date of birth, uh, gender, address, date of joining, experience, salary, uh, role of the professor, non professor, department ID, faculty ID, next of kin, qualifications, and subject taught by the professor, by the first. So you have a Subject ID, I mean subject database, which contains subject ID, which is primary key, the name of the subject syllabus, uh, professor in charge of the subject, uh, reference books that are needed for the subject, and uh, lectures, hours, and uh, information about the subject, I mean probably the introduction about the subject. Uh, uh, maybe you have a project topic on the subject, you give that also, and uh, the course ID, 
which is uh, coming from our college to the British, which is the foreign thing. So you have a student, and you know, the bullshit about a student, you have a student ID, you have the first name, the middle name, the last name, address, the date of birth, the gender, faculty, department, course type, you know, course type means that I, the student is you know, taking a UG course or a PG course, the name of the course, probably, uh, BSc Computer Science. The academic year, next of kin, email, phone number, and the blood group. And finally, uh, I've made the attendance, uh, you know, the attendance, the attendance uh, database, which is a simple attendance database. I'm going to be deciding what I'm going to be using uh, and the number of, of entries I'm going to be attendance later on in the course of the tutorial. You have your identity ID subject. Uh, the date of time, professor name, the number of period, student ID, student name, class in the year, and the uh, course type. So, what are the hardware and software requirements for this uh, to make this uh, application? For the software requirement, you need a um, Microsoft Visual Studio to learn again above, or you can use also Microsoft Visual Studio to learn here. Uh, also, you can, for your database, you need your SQL Server to learn here and above, or you can. Uh, uh, apply other database like Oracle and MySQL. Uh, for reporting, we need a uh, software to report for reporting. And if you're interested in design, you need uh, Adobe Photoshop for design of graphic objects. Uh, for the operating system, you need win either Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.4, or 10. As we know that uh, there's no longer support for Windows XP, so it comes on the legacy software. So we're not going to be using it in this tutorial. But if you still have your Windows XP, you can install the software. So what are the hardware requirements? You need a physical machine, uh, which is a computer, and you need uh, the machine configuration should be probably 62 bit, uh, I mean 64 or 32 bit versus architecture. Uh, a minimum of 2 GB RAM, uh, a minimum of 2 GB, uh, 250 uh, GB hard disk, sorry. And uh, probably 1.5 GHz clock speed, and the language which we're gonna be employing uh, are the two famous languages, <laughs> two good languages. Visual C Sharp and uh, uh, PB.NET. The most important requirement is dedication and continuous uh, perseverance. Like I'll tell you, uh, building a software, starting it is always very easy. But when you get into the middle of it, you find so many problems. You find so many errors, you find so many bugs. And, and you, you get depressed and you feel like you want to give up. I'm going to encourage you to never give up because this is a step into your future. I wish you a very good luck and uh, uh, God bless you as you could along with me. See you in the next tutorial.